Now, to activate the power of God, knowing then that the power of God is at the back of every supernatural manifestation, it's important for you to know that the power of God needs to be activated. Just because the power of God is there does not make it functional. Are we together now? Yes. So you can have electricity connected. Your house can be connected to electricity. But to benefit from that electricity, you must understand how to activate, to release the power. You can have your fridge not cold. You can have the television not on. You can have maybe the ACs not on. And yet there's electricity within the house because you do not know how to activate that power. To activate the power of God, I wrote here, you need to know the will of God. This is the first requirement. You will never see the power of God at work in your life, whether to heal, whether to deliver, whether to, to lift, outside of the knowledge of the will of God. You want to see the power of God at work in your life. The first thing you need to know and to understand is the will of God as revealed in his word. This is very important. You want to experience miracles tonight and any other time in your Christian experience, you cannot experience the power of God ignoring the knowledge of the will of God. Because I have taught you that the will of God defines the boundary of the administration of his power. The power of God only functions within the confines of the will of God. Anything the will of God does not allow, anything the will of God does not permit, the power of God has no business sponsoring it. Are we together? This is important. The primary assignment of the power of God as revealed in scripture is to bring everything and all things that are in disalignment to God's will into the will of God. Hallelujah. So to activate the power of God, you need to understand his will as revealed in scripture. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. 1 John 5 and 14. And this is the confidence, the Bible says, that we have in him. That if we ask anything, not just according to our desires, not just according to our wishes, not even just according to our pain, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Hallelujah. So the will of God is what defines what kind of prayer God hears and responds to. I have told you that he's touched with the feelings of our infirmity. It's called compassion. But his, his movement, his, his, his power, releasing his power in the life of anyone, including the believer, is at the mercy of his will. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 17. Paul again is shedding light and helping us to understand the value of knowing the will of God. The, the previous verses will say, walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. He says, um, uh, he says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. When we get to verse 17, he now says, wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So your wisdom as a believer is the ability to understand and walk in keeping with that which is consistent to and with the will of God. If you understand me, say amen. amen. You want to see the power of God, you must know what the will of God is. And the will of God is captured as revealed in scripture as his promises, exceeding great and precious promises. It's a revelation of the will of God. That means God has committed himself. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So God is thinking about me. God is thinking about you. God is thinking about your children, thinking about your career. But it's important for you to know what he's thinking about so that in releasing your faith to receive, you are not praying amiss, wishing amiss, desiring amiss, only to be left disappointed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? Yes. You must know the will of God. For instance, 
when it has to do with your health, your wholeness and vitality, the Bible is very clear as to the fact that God desires us to walk in wholeness, to walk in perfection of health. When he sent the disciples who would later become apostles in Acts chapter 10 from verse 1, the Bible says he gave them power over unclean spirits, Sorry, Matthew, Matthew 10, Matthew 10, my apologies, Matthew 10 and verse 1. The Bible says he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner, all manner, all manner. So it doesn't matter what name you call it, it still qualifies to be part of this list. All manner, headaches, all manner, blood conditions, all manner, cancers, fibroids, and even the ones that medicine is yet to discover. If you don't know the name, call it all manner. And the demons, the devils must answer to the word of God. All manner, all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Are we together? You know what it means? A disease is not just a jam. Anything that puts you in a condition that affects your default design is a disease. A disease does not have to be sickness, poverty, failure, pain, fear. These are diseases. The Bible says he gave power to heal them. So you may not be sick, but you can be diseased. Hallelujah. To heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. I like that statement. You don't do good just because you have a kind heart. It takes power to do good. Anything that reveals Jesus is good. Anything that reveals his light is good. Anything that brings people to experience dignity in their lives is good.